It's amazing to be here. Um, my name's Duke Al. I'm a spoken word poet and rapper. I live, um, I live in Cardiff in South Wales. Uh, I've all, I also live with OCD, so I'm just going to quickly just tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I started writing when I was about 11 years old, uh, scribbling sort of raps and poems in my, in my old lyric book. By, by 12 years old, it became a bit of a self-therapy, a bit of a coping mechanism, because I was struggling with um, horrendous intrusive thoughts, which I was very fearful of. I, I didn't want to tell anybody about them. I was uh, afraid what people would say or, or think of them. Uh, I, later, I later on found out that I have obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. And, um, and yeah, I started writing writing down how I felt, uh, I was articulating myself on the page, and, um, and writing poetry just really became a bit of a, a, bit of a cell therapy for me. Uh, I eventually told my family how I felt, and you know, I got the support I needed. Um, but I've got a little bit of a poem, which I'm gonna perform for you, if that's okay. Uh, just that that sort of sums up that part of the story, and then I'll get into diabetes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this poem is called Poetry and Rhyme. And it goes like this. I've scribbled bad thoughts in my notebook. From a young age, I've been feeling broken. Look, I'm riddled with disorder. Everybody thinks OCD is order. That I label things A to Z color-coded, but I'm overloaded mentally with daily torture. You see, it stops at C because he's a beast. The beauty in my mind's deceased, this anxiety, trauma, being a bad thought, hoarder. And it's back again, so I turn to the drink, it becomes my water. And that's a turn of phrase. As I open up the tinny, OCD squirms in rage. But when will I learn temporary fixes? It ain't worth the pain. It opens up a can of worms. I try to wriggle out the riddles, but I'm dazed. I need some support to fight, see. Should I go Martin or Malcolm? Can you tell me, Spike Lee? Maybe Black Panther's the answer. I drink vibra vibranium to fix my cranium. Chadwick rest in high peace. Mum gave me some of her black magic. Said, listen, son. Never lose yourself, mental health will appear like a hat rabbit. Bad habit, I don't need to fear like Harry, I'll solve Tom Riddle, I'll attack, stab it with my pen. Cause you could cut me open, I bleed ink. Mine's been broken, I needed to rethink. I'm married to the pen, the ring binds to the, babe, to the page. Because poetry and rhyme saved my life. Pen is sharper than a blade. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that was... Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a, uh, a poem that sort of sums up uh, my experience living with OCD. And then, and then 23 years old, I was, I was diagnosed with, with type 1 diabetes. Um, back in 2015 or 2016, I went to Thailand and Bali with, with my partner. And when I was in Bali, I was in Ubud in the monkey forest. And uh, I remember going to a restaurant, I had a surf and turf. I picked up a shrimp, put it in my mouth. It tasted horrendous. <laughs> I spat it out straight away. And then the next seven days, I slowly started to become very, very ill. Um, I just thought it was sunstroke. But uh, turns out when I got home, uh, I had salmonella, and it got into my blood. It turned, turned septic, so I was on an intravenous line for about six weeks. And that was, they believe, the first trigger of my, my type 1 diabetes. So for the next year, I had a very slow transition into type 1 diabetes. Um, and uh, my, my second trigger was, 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 was then stress. So yes, 23 years old, diagnosed with, with type 1 diabetes. So I've only had it for five years. I'm, I'm sure there's loads of people who've had it far longer than I have. But yes, it's been a very uh, interesting experience for myself. Um, I've, I've, I've also experienced burnout. I only, only had it five years, but I've, ex I've experienced burnout. And uh, this, this poem sort of sums up that, I guess. Uh, it's a bit, bit of a rap, this one, actually. Blood testing and injecting, it became a chore, see. Burnout settled in, turns out I hit, hit the floor, see. I wanted to be normal, like how I was before, see. Diagnosed at 23, T1D had forced me to take time off uni. Diabetes taught me if I don't look after myself, I'd become a ghost and haunt me. Went through a stage of rage, I didn't care if I was poorly. I just thought, oh, poor me. Somebody please pour me another beer. T1D had forced me. How will, I, how will I manage a condition and complete my sports degree? Will I even make it to 40? But I was lucky having people that support me. My family made sure I stood tall. See, this is no joke. I made the choice to not ignore me. Began accepting, injecting. I did it for me. But I want to know if you can relate. What's your story? And that's what we're here today for. We're here to hear um, so many people's stories. And Respect and admiration for people um, who've been living with type 1 diabetes uh, for so long. And, and also who had to use those, that different technology. You know, I, I've, I've only been, uh, as I said, for five years, and the technology is just amazing. So yeah, thank you so much. I've got a little bit of a poem for that as well. This is called Bittersweet. 
When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Bitter, sweet. I think about this lemon phrase as I penetrate just below my belly button waist height. The needle thin pierces into my skin. I self-medicate insulin so I do not waste away from DKA. Most days my mellow brain interrogates my pancreas. Why are you refusing to do your duty? Answer me. My hands are up. An understanding I may never gain, but to be alive in this life within 100 years since insulin was developed, hey, what are the chances? If I was going to get T1D, I guess it's good I got it now. I mean, it's easier to treat. Bitter, sweet. Thank you. Uh, this is called The Courage of an Icon. Maybe I'll do it over here, because I might speak too loud. But <laughs> uh, The Courage of an Icon. How to turn rage into courageousness. 1936, Berlin, dangerous. Who would be brave enough to represent the shade of us on a stage where Hitler betrayed Aryan as the master race but couldn't keep up with the faster pace of the man who was about to set the track to flames who previously set three world records in an hour which till this day remains unchanged. No more chained, live in caged prisons or be enslaved driven. This is the race of racism. On your marks, get set, run, the sound of the gun. His feet move quicker than the speed of my tongue. He dashes as fast as the flash and he's won. Wow, four gold medals, what a victory. Lutz longer, helped him long jump into history. Yet on his return to the USA, cruelty dwelled. Roosevelt salute, it fell. Meanwhile, white athletes were invited into the White House. Can you tell me how does winning mean losing out? He paved the way for other greats like Usain to make their names on an Olympic stage. His legacy keeps on growing. So let me keep the mic on as we celebrate an icon and I dedicate this poem to Jesse Owens. Thank you. Yeah.